Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us today as we visit Kalaundra's Queensland Air Museum. Links and information in the descriptions below. Pride of place and taking centre stage was this retired RAAF F111 swing wing bomber. The RAAF operated a total of 24 which were delivered in 1973. Never used in anger, the most notable event was the 2006 sinking of the North Korean merchant ship Pongsu, which was used in an attempt to smuggle heroin into Australia. I believe nine were lost through various accidents during their time in service. Keen viewers, please note the mock-up of a Lancaster bomber's nose and Grand Slam bomb on the right. Here's a closer view of the site of an F-111, the air intake and details of the underside and undercarriage. Simply gorgeous! Please stay tuned as we explore the rest of the museum. Nearby the F-111 were many display cabinets that housed not only memorabilia, but a collection of beautiful model aircraft. A collection that would be worthy in any aviation enthusiast's private collection. My favourite was this model of a Hawker Hurricane. The level of detail and the realism of the paint scheme could not be faulted. Behind the main shed was this late 1950s Bristol Bloodhound Mark 1 Sam. It had a range of 52km and a top speed of Mark 2.7. The museum had two on display, but this was my favourite a Hawker Hunter fighter jet in the colours of the Singaporean Air Force. The four ports for the 30mm cannons were clearly visible, as was the unmistakable triangular air intakes for the engine. First introduced in 1954, the Hawker Hunter saw service with several air forces and took part in many wars. Almost 2,000 were produced. It was well regarded as an agile fighter jet. In Singaporean service in the 1970s, I understand 46 were ultimately delivered to Singapore. In the centre of the museum grounds was an open air shed that housed many aircraft. I was delighted to see this classic DC-3 in the colours of Airlines of New South Wales. Although small by modern standards, I felt this DC-3 still looked large. Gorgeous! Here's a closer look at the classic undercarriage. Here's a quick walk through the shed and some of the amazing aircraft on display. We will be taking a closer look at some of these aircraft soon. The first plane we'll be taking a closer look at is this de Havilland Sea Venom. Someone in my family loves naval aviation. This classic 1950s British naval fighter jet was unmistakable with its twin broom tail and cylindrical large nose.
39 served in the Royal Australian Navy, including on board HMAS Melbourne between 1956 to 1971. The folded wings served to reduce space requirements on board a carrier. Here's a closer look at the undercarriage. The twin boom tail and the arrestor hook. Shop eye viewers would have spotted this sabre jet a few minutes ago. It epitomizes the 1950s. The sabre jet was immortalized in the Korean War in dogfights with the Russian MiG-15. This one had a beautiful Australian RAAF livery. The Commonwealth Aircraft Company made 112 Avon Sabres. They were in service from 1956 to 1971 with a redesigned fuselage, a more powerful British engine, 30mm cannons and sidewinder missiles. Next is the supersonic looking XRAAF Mirage 3. Built in Australia under license, the government aircraft factory made 114. With a top speed of Mark 2.2, it was armed with 30mm cannons and missiles. They were retired in 1988 and 50 was sold to Pakistan. One of the historic aircraft undergoing restoration was this Canberra bomber. Over 1,350 were made in total. It had a long career with several air forces beginning in 1951 and ending in 2007. 49 were made in Australia by the Government Aircraft Factory. In the RAAF, Canberra bombers saw action during the Malayan Emergency and the Vietnam War, where two were lost to hostile fire. I can't wait for this one to be fully restored. This is a North American Texan advanced trainer. Widely used in World War II to train Allied pilots, it was in service from 1935 to 1995. Almost 15,500 were made. Somebody was very excited to see this almost fully restored Lockheed Ventura World War II medium bomber. It first saw action in Europe in 1942 with limited success. Beefed up, it later served in the Pacific Theatre where it had greater success. The colour scheme of this example was typical of US aircraft in the Pacific. Here you can get a closer look at the engine, nacelle and undercarriage. Still undergoing restoration was the dorsal turret that carried two 50 caliber machine guns. Tucked away in the shed was this Westland Wessex helicopter. 382 were produced in total. They were in service from 1961 and last produced in 1970 before being replaced by the Sea King. In Australia, almost 30 were used for anti-submarine patrols as troop transports and for supply and logistics. They were retired in 1989 from Australian use. This Mustang was also on display. With its manly silver finish, the Mustang is an immortal World War II warbird. Legendary dogfights over Europe and then later in the war over the Pacific. The Mustang's speed, handling and deadly armament of 650 caliber machine guns and the unmatched range made it a war-winning aircraft. If you have ever wondered what the view was like from the cockpit, this is what the pilot saw. 
The black top side reduces glare. The clear panels make it possible to see the arrangement of the ammunition for 50 caliber machine guns. Also of note was this Armstrong Whitworth Meteor. The Meteor was Britain's first jet fighter of World War II. It had a long career after World War II, including the Korean War. Almost 4,000 were produced in total. I believe this example was intended as a night fighter. 113 served in the RAAF and they were used in combat during the Korean War. Outdoors, there was a relatively large collection of aircraft in various states of preservation. This Fokker friendship brought back memories from my childhood. Growing up in Malaysia in the 70s and 80s, the friendship was a familiar sight and the sound of the twin engines unmistakable. Strictly speaking, this wasn't a MiG-15, but their Polish built equivalents. This one is a two-seater trainer bearing Polish markings. Russian flown MiG-15s came as a complete shock to Allied pilots when they were first encountered over Korea. They outperformed their British and American counterparts where the combination of high speed, agility and lethal armament made them tough adversaries. We came across this Lockheed P-3 Orion aircraft, used primarily as an anti-submarine warfare and maritime patrol aircraft. Although retired from Australian use, many countries still use them. Over 750 were produced in total. Here is a closer look at the nose, bomb bay doors, and the starboard wing and engines. Other aircraft included this de Havilland Caribou, this Grumman Tracer and this Lockheed P-2 Neptune. Hopefully a bit of elbow grease and TLC will bring them back to their former glory. Last but not least was this Beechcraft Starship, a twin turboprop pusher. It was a civilian aircraft able to carry up to six passengers. It had a top speed of 385 miles per hour and a maximum range of 2,800 km. Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed our video. Till next time, look to the skies.